Good morning to everyone. Myself, Salika Vadia, student of final year MSc Nursing from Bharti Vidyapi Team to be University, College of Nursing, Pune, welcomes you all for today's international webinar on the occasion of International Breastfeeding Week celebration. Theme for this year is Step Up for Breastfeeding and Educate and Support. Before we start, I would like to state one quote. Education is the passport to the future for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Now, I would like to give brief information about our esteemed organization. Bharti Vidya Pet Dim to be University is established in the year 1964 by Honorable Dr. Patangrao Kadam Sir. During the last 57 years, Bharti Vidya Pet made astonishing strides in the field of education, particularly higher and professional education. The National Institution Ranking Framework ranked Bharti Vidya Pet 76 overall in India for 2020-22. Bharti Vidya Pet College of Nursing Pune was established on 26 September 1992 under Pune University headed by Dr. Major Mrs. Tapti Bhattacharji. College of Nursing became a constituent unit of Bharti Vidya Pet deemed to be university in 1996. It is the first private college to provide various academic offerings in nursing from GNM to PhD. The college and its degrees have approval and recognition of the Indian Nursing Council as well as the Maharashtra Nursing Council. It has got A-grade accreditation by NAC in November 2016. Today's webinar is organized by Bharti Vidya Pet College of Nursing, Pune and arranged by Obstetric and Gynecological Nursing and Child Health Nursing Department. Before we start, I want to say, if you have any questions, type them into the question box. We will get back to you by email. Now, I would request my co-host, Ms. Prajakta Jadav, for further program. Over to you, Prajakta. Thank you, Salika. A very good morning to one and all gathered here. Myself, Ms. Prajakta Jadav, student of final year MSc Nursing, Today we are here for our international webinar on the occasion of International Breastfeeding Week celebration. On this auspicious occasion, I would like to introduce our respected principal, Madam, Dr. Mrs. Khurshid Zamadar, principal of a Bharti Vidya Pet deemed to be University College of Nursing, Pune. She is a gold medalist in MSc Nursing. She stood first in university with a distinction. Madam hold the degree of a PhD in nursing. She is completed EMBA in Hospital Administration. She is an active member of various professional organizations, TNAI, SOMI, and NRSI. Madam is the recipient of Appreciation Award by Tata Motors for the Community Services in 2013 and also awarded Best Principal Award by Maharashtra Nursing Council in 2017. It is my great honor and pleasure to introduce faculty of Obstetric and Gynecological Nursing Department. Dr. K. M. M. Chubi, Assistant Professor. Dr. Supriya Patil Ray, Assistant Professor. Dr. Sujita Devi, Assistant Professor. Mrs. Manisha Gadade, Clinical Instructor. Mrs. Sonali Atre, Clinical Instructor. Faculty from Department of Child Health Nursing, Dr. Bhakes Rizogdev, HOD and Assistant Professor. Mrs. Neha Sangpar, Clinical Instructor. Sharmila Kulal, Tutor. Mrs. Kanchan Shinde, Tutor. Mrs. Rucha Bade, Clinical Instructor. Mr. Anosh Gadkari, Clinical Instructor. Now I request respected principal madam to kindly deliver the welcome address. Good morning and welcome to all the participants on behalf of Bharti Vidya P deemed to be University, College of Nursing, Pune. I welcome all the invited guests, the organizing committee, the eminent speakers, and the delegates for this international webinar on the theme on step up for breastfeeding educate and support as we are celebrating from 1st to 7th of august 
the World Breastfeeding Week. I welcome all the eminent speakers for accepting our invitation and being with us for celebration of this week. I invite Dr. Nilima Pandit, who is an alumni from Bharti Vidya Peet, presently working with Cork University Maternity Hospital, University College, Cork, Ireland. Thank you, Nilima Madam, for accepting our invitation and being with us for this week as one of the eminent speakers to speak about breastfeeding. We have one more speaker who is also an eminent speaker, Dr. Parul Datta. Madam is retired principal nursing officer, master trainer of facility based newborn care and vice president of Indian Association of Neonatal Nurses. Thank you, Madam, for being with us, for accepting and will be guiding us on various issues which are related to breastfeeding and caring and supporting. We have one more alumni and um, alumni who is Mrs. Pranali Pardeshi. She is presently from the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, Kings Lane NHS Foundation Trust, Kings Lane, UK. Thank you, Pranali, madam, for being with us and will help us and guide us on various aspects connecting to the breastfeeding again. We even have Dr. Priyanka Shinde, who would be highlighting on the lactation and she is presently working as lactation consultant at Lalwani Mother and Child Care Hospital, Pune. To give the highlights about today's this uh, this week's celebration, as I said, it is regarding step up for breastfeeding, educate and support. Breast milk is perfectly designed for a child's nutritional and immunological needs and helps to prevent infection. Breastfeeding, as we all know, it promotes bonding between the mother and the child. The COVID-19 pandemic and geopolitical conflicts have widened and deepened inequalities, keeping more people into food insecurity. In addition, limitations to the health system's capacity lead to the deterioration of breastfeeding support. Some countries implemented non-evidence-based policies such as separating the babies from their mothers and discouraging breastfeeding when COVID-19 was suspected. Besides that, community breastfeeding peer support groups were not accessible to parents in need of help because of the restricted social contacts. As we have seen, the targeted outreach by the breast milk substitute industry influenced parents' infant feeding decisions. The misinformation about COVID-19 and rampant marketing by the breast milk substitute industries has led to option which has scared the parents into formula feeding. Just to have a better understanding about breastfeeding, what actually is needed, what are the things which need not be continued, we have arranged or organized this workshop, the series of workshops, webinars and educating the nursing fraternity and the others who really need to know about it. Supporting breastfeeding involves many actors and levels. Women need support from the health service, workplace and community to optimize their breastfeeding, progressing from one level to the another. Education and transformation of the existing system underpinned by evidence-based national policy will help to ensure breastfeeding, friendly health facilities, supporting the communities and workplaces will restore and improve breastfeeding nutrition and health in both the short term and long term plans. This is the main objective. This webinar is being organized and I wish all the best to all the participants for uh, enrolling themselves into this workshop and I wish all the best for the organizing organizers and I hope everybody gets enriched and help in educating and supporting the breastfeeding week. Thank you and all the best. Thank you, madam, for your valuable words. Hello, everyone. Myself, Shikal Bosle, final year MSc nursing student. I would like to welcome our first speaker, Dr. Nilima Pandit. She has obtained PG MBA degree. She has certified in nursing informatics from Cork University. To her credit, she has a diploma in information and system management. She has a master degree in obstetric and gynecological nursing from Bharati Vidyapit College of Nursing, Pune and has been a gold medalist. Obtained PhD degree in sociology and nursing from Tilak Maharashtra Vidyapit Pune. Obtained doctorate of nursing practice from Cork University. 
she has received rotary award for excellent in nursing services she also a clean service award from arabian oil company kuwait i would request madam to share her view on raising awareness regarding breastfeeding outcome of health and well being over to you ma'am for the session good morning raising breastfeeding awareness outcome of health and well being the occasion is 1st to 7th of august breastfeeding awareness week proposed by wh why breastfeeding and well being are together breastfeeding is a biological normal feeding method for infants and young children and that ensures optimum growth and development for the children breastfeeding gives a child optimum start in a life it provides nourishment and health protection it promotes mental health and its long term benefits are neuro development outcomes and reduce risk of obesity among moms benefits to breastfeeding mother include enhanced bonding between mother and child reduce anxiety reduce risk of ovarian and breast cancer and postpartum healthy weight when we say breastfeeding it's a dyad that means we have to speak about a mother at the same time we have to speak about the baby we cannot separate them while speaking about the breastfeeding we have in our hospital evidence of breastfeeding fact sheet published every year which we use for raising awareness research uh, in the international and national arena also indicate that improving our breastfeeding rates will contribute to improve the child and maternal health and reduction in overall chronic diseases therefore burden on the health services there was a specific breastfeeding publication by lancet series that highlighted the breastfeeding and health well-being connection is stronger than ever which is understood by healthcare professionals that's what we have to um make the uh, awareness more prominent in the society children who are not breastfed have a higher incidence of and severity of many illnesses including respiratory tract urinary tract infection infection gastroenteritis otitis media and diabetes and this all can be included in every year's fact sheet which lactation consultant or a nurse or a midwife or a specialist or a doctor can include in their awareness campaign overall in ireland we have a healthy ireland framework in that we have a separate breastfeeding initiative under maternity uh, sections which involves addressing risk factors and promoting protective factors at every stage of life including period from prenatal through the childhood to support health and well-being so as per doh and who breastfeeding for infants first 6 months after which mothers are recommended to continue breastfeeding in combination with suitably nutritious and self complementary foods semi solids and solid food until the children are 2 years of age we also have a strategy uh, 2016 20 uh, 26 10 year strategy creating better future together which was published in 2016 that outlines the responsibilities of doh and national women and infants program to promote uh, support and protection of breastfeeding actions uh, in that include improvement in support for breastfeeding both within the hospital and community compliance of all maternity unit with the baby friendly hospital initiative and implementation of wh code and breastfeeding promotion campaigns under that all 19 maternity hospital have at least two lactation consultant on the hospital grounds uh, available for all breastfeeding moms as well as public health nurses and um, midwives uh, are also taking education every 2 years for breastfeeding and they optimize every 2 years thereafter the action also include investment in breastfeeding training and skill development for healthcare staff 
provision of additional lactation specialist post and partnership working with uh, to promote the culture and accept uh, that accepts and supports the breastfeeding so raising breastfeeding awareness why and how and when the big words doesn't always tell how and when and why so why why awareness why not knowledge why not attitude why not practice but awareness encompasses all because awareness of a breastfeeding recommendation to breastfeed exclusively to 6 months is independent positive predictor so if you have more awareness you are exclusively feeding breastfeed so that's again the research and reporting so if we have awareness we will have we will achieve the goal of breastfeeding initiation and duration at least for first 6 months also improving mothers awareness of all this breastfeeding recommendation and strengthening their intention to breastfeed can lead to increased breastfeeding uh, feeding initiation and duration for themselves as well as their families as well as their friends and community to date however all of this was never studied or researched or reported as a result impact of promoting the recommendation uh, who recommendation on the rest uh, rates of breastfeeding is not uh, very clear so, like between awareness and breastfeeding initiative between awareness and uh, breastfeeding exclusively for 6 months between awareness of mom and uh, infant's health these kind of a comparative studies were never reported or less reported so this therefore this might uh, explain that the poor understanding of breastfeeding recommendation or poor knowledge attitude or practice of bre- breastfeeding in the community but is is that so so let's let's talk about how we can do this as we know that recent years uh, we are talking about breastfeeding uh, a lot if if you will realize in indian society we had uh, we were considered natural breastfeeding uh, mothers but what happened during 19th uh, century there were uh, after world war 2 there were lots of um, opportunities uh, for developing formulas and pharmaceuticals and all of that when they mushroomed breastfeeding became a less happening thing and then the, because of the formula and their advertisement breastfeeding was a back venture and here now we are in india also we have to talk about raising awareness and that it's outcome of health and well being but we are not alone right from government to the organization hospital organizations to the local community nurses doctors all are working towards this and we are part of this big system in helping parents to best feed so <clears throat> there is this gail barter health visitor professional in uk she says that you have to develop ideas of your own so some of her ideas are like this so who's a breastfeeding champion in your hospital in your community in your group listen to that you might get new ideas from that person will your department do some joint breastfeeding communication so if you are in the hospital your hospital department if you are in the working place your working place department if you are in a community your community leader if you are in a family who is a powerful person in your family so for example you may want to focus on targeting grandparents or at the workplace colleagues or male oriented industries uh, or the breastfeeding groups or the whatsapp groups can we use all of this for breastfeeding awareness raising breastfeeding awareness what about uh, breastfeeding friendly designs uh, with a breastfeeding friendly uh, spaces like parks restaurants workplaces businesses service station can we have posters can we have face to face talks can we have demonstrations can we have advertisements same like what we had for uh, formulas can we not use the same thing for breastfeeding awareness can we influence the environment by asking restaurant to put up a breastfeeding welcome scheme 
or assign or incorporate some discussion on the premises as part of their environmental health checks or something like that. They always have some corporate health check plan. So can we not include breastfeeding welcome scheme in that? Can we not uh, propose that? So what about community halls, spa, beauty saloons, and all other community spaces where we can have possibly meet um, with all other health lifestyle groups um, for let's say exercises or some other meetings related to health can we include breastfeeding uh, in that let's think about uh, formulating some groups not just for mothers but their husbands friends dads and grandparents group to discuss about how we can help mothers for breastfeeding exclusively different groups can we use all of this problem i think uh, issues uh, um, checking issues you can have more ideas than this then for mothers can we include key messages what really makes a difference like what exactly is a good position for breastfeeding how to watch important asymmetrical latch where the breastfeeding is not where there are sore nipples where the baby is not interested baby slips on the breast all of this small small minute details of breastfeeding can we just have some phrases like nose to nipple chin to skin something like that to to exclusively tell mom that okay watch this three signs you know the baby is latching good also, can we have some WhatsApp messages uh, for normal breastfeeding expectation or face to face or posters or something like that, that a breastfeed baby will have eight to 12 times uh, breastfeed in 24 hours, sometimes more. The normal um, breastfeeding time is 20 minutes on each breast and listening, how to listen and watch swallowing of breast uh, feeding how the settled baby will wake for feeds, how they will have a sufficiently weight and dirty nappies, that is a sign of having enough breast milk. If this, if these key uh, buzzwords, if we will tell them, they will be having their own uh, empowerment and they will promote breastfeeding to all other mothers. And that's how we can have a sharing of resources. <clears throat> and there, thereby we can promote peer support in local community. So for us, how we can support? First of all, we have to separate breastfeeding from the parenting status. We cannot judge or prejudice or give mother some advice or hand like whatever she is achieving her feeding goals. If she doesn't want to, or if there are any other problems, we should not judge why she is not breastfeeding. So parenting and breastfeeding should be different. We shouldn't step back and say, okay, it's your decision, but let me know if you want. Next day, you can again say, yes, these are the things, these are the th uh, support available. Let me know what you want. So we have to separate uh, breastfeeding from parenting status. You should not leave as it is. Then we have to change our line of questioning when we are talking about breastfeeding with the mother as a nurse. So instead of saying, are you breastfeeding? Do you want to breastfeed? Instead of that, we have to ask, what do you know about breastfeeding? What do you need to know about breastfeeding? Have you had experience with breastfeeding? If so, how long? What was it like? That way we can start from whatever the position that mother is and then raise her awareness. The third thing is build self-confidence and empowerment. Because at this moment of uh, social media, everyone knows about breastfeeding and that is beneficial. But at the same time, they have to believe that they have a power to breastfeed and their, their goal should, with the competent assistant, they can achieve it themselves. So if you will say that you can do it, you, you, it's you, it's your power, I think they will be more confident to going through. So we have to we have to push all these three. I know it's it's easier said than done. But <clears throat> sometimes we have to step back and observe how the breastfeeding is going. So the MOFOR is giving a web link where there is a tool called BOAT, B-O-A-T, Breastfeeding Observation Assessment Tool. 
where a nurse can observe or expert can observe how the breastfeeding is going on. In Ireland, um, there is also competency framework for breastfeeding support. So every nurse and every wife should undergo that competency skill study day. And this is the tool how you can assess. So becoming a professional support, um, also you need to be, uh, you, you need to develop a skill as well as you need to be expert and you have to retain that knowledge and you have to add to that knowledge too yearly, uh, as I said, in Ireland. We also have plenty of printing material resources available and online uh, web hyperlink as it here. What to eat right from there to breastfeeding. If you have COVID, then there are some um, guidelines for mother, then 10 signs of successful. Then there are also webinar where healthcare professionals, breastfeeding community groups who are the experts and parents uh, participate. So why we are providing professional support? We have to understand certain factors that will affect uh, breastfeeding duration and ex exclusivity. So the first one is demographic factors, so whether it is urban or rural, multi-para, primary para, um, understanding languages um, and all other, like if she, she has another children who is sick, or all these demographic factors make a difference for duration and exclusivity. Biological factors, so anatomical fact, uh, issues like um, breast anatomy for a mother, nipple problems, uh, cleft lip and palate for a baby, preterm baby, any other illness in the baby, any other uh, illness in the mother, all of these are biological factors. Attitude characteristics like sometimes formula is made by someone else, fed by someone else, rather than engaging with the breastfeeding herself could be the attitude problem. And we really need to address that strongly and with a positive attitude, but not forcefully. Hospital practices. Is our hospital uh, have a lactation support person? Are there any resources available? Because when we are supporting breastfeeding, you need a time to sit with the mother and help her um, to initiate a breastfeeding. Later on, we have to uh, develop how, because every every day is a different day for a mother and a baby. So whatever the needs were yesterday are not there today or will not be there tomorrow. So do we have knowledge and skilled support in the hospital for this? Depending on that, the duration and exclusive breastfeeding uh, is developed. Cultural practices, family practices, tradition, family cohesiveness, if someone is making decision on behalf of a mother. Are these factors available there? We have to look for that and we have to address it that way. Then social variables. Is there a nuclear family? Is there an employment problem? Is there any other social variables for financial or any other um, developmental issues there? We have to um, address uh, depending on this. So in Ireland, as I said, we have a lactation consultant, two lactation consultant in each hospital who is a certified health professional specialized in breastfeeding support and breastfeeding issues who help parents right from the antenatal period up to the uh, community uh, group. <clears throat> so they help initializing breastfeeding issues like milk supply, uh, sore nipples, breastfeeding positions, express breast milk, addressing uh, community groups with the consultations uh, with the hospitals and uh, birthing centers and other private practices as well. We also have online breastfeeding booklets right from the good start to early days, feeding cues, laid back feeding, overcome difficulties, breast beginning, sleep safely and BFHI Ireland, that is breastfeeding healthy Ireland. We also have interactive online classes. On these topics, various topics, 
then breastfeeding videos are there pre-recorded videos where um, there are uh, parent craft and online uh, education for about the breastfeeding there are also breastfeeding support group information on the website where because it's a vast uh, area you need a support group around you you can have look for those groups you can attend it's free of cost we also give this tip sheet uh, for every mother who goes home on the breastfeeding journey and some websites information we have a breast milk bank in ireland who we can um, check the availability and total 900 babies a year it's it's just started so it's a very small only 900 babies a year um, breast milk are donated so when when as i said lactation consultant meets antenatally right from the antenatal classes then when the baby is from baby's perspective skin to skin after delivery is initiated access to lactation consultant is given website helpline everything then public facilities for breastfeeding is uh, all the information is given on uh, right from the antenatal ongoing education for healthcare professional uh, is done so all the midwives in the hospitals are able to give support and raise awareness um, then support from family healthcare professional society we have a webinars meetings uh, also right. time to time going on we constantly tell breastfeeding in diets that is benefits for mother as well as baby uh, as well as benefits for mother we don't separate we have a lovely booklets uh, this is uh, the boss positive breastfeeding book is by emmy brown everything you need to feed your baby with the confidence that is by parent hospital has developed breastfeeding a good start of life and also there is a position paper so that is also available for public la lash is one of the uh, league in ireland for breastfeeding for many many years and uh, its uh, membership is available online and those all forms are given when mothers are coming in the hospital while cooking we also have plenty of uh, breastfeeding and baby feeding posters all around the hospital something like if you will see that early cues that i'm hungry what baby does mid cues that i'm really hungry and late cues calm me and then feed me so it it's it's a lovely it's beautiful it's when it's a big poster uh, it looks like mothers can relate to this there is also <clears throat> available support in the hospital for neonatal unit who wants to ex uh, breastfeed their babies but because of their prematurity they cannot so until they develop that uh, breastfeeding uh, when the baby is of enough weight uh, that support also is given we have a breastfeeding group uh, in our hospital where mothers come and sit up to 2 years and they some of their uh, information uh, when they give each other something like bring some snacks keep a water bottle with you when you are doing breastfeeding at home keep a remote control or a pillow or some cloth or phone and a charger close by so these are all helpful tips they give each other which we probably as a professional may not mention so as during the pandemic we had a little bit of backlash of all uh, stuff but before before pandemic 2019 year theme was empire parent and enable breastfeeding highlighting important role of friends and family members supporting breastfeeding in 2020 we had to address pandemic needs so if mother is too ill for breastfeed they should still be supported to express their milk and the infant should be fed by healthy individuals so depending on that we change our theme now this year breastfeeding week we have a step up for breastfeeding educate and support so this education and this support is for both for mothers families as well as healthcare professionals which needs to highlight the necessity of protection promotion and support for those breastfeeding waba is world alliance of breastfeeding action group or a network of individuals and organizations for protection promotion and support of breastfeeding worldwide 
they actually parallel all the 12 sustainable development goal by WHO um, moved to breastfeeding. So that is uh, breastfeeding is a natural and low cost. Uh, so that is uh, because we don't have to spend something on uh, breastfeeding. So it reduces poverty. The second one is exclusive breastfeeding and continued breastfeeding for two years and beyond provide high quality of nutrients and adequate energy that can help to prevent hunger. So that is a hunger. Breastfeeding significantly improves the health and development. So that is a health. Breastfeeding and adequate complementary feeding are fundamental of readiness to learn. So that helps in learning. Number five is a great equalizer, giving every child a fair and best start in the life. Breastfeeding is unique right of a woman, so it is an equalizer. Breastfeeding demands and provides water. So again, it's a water. Seven is less energy uh, when compared to formula production and industrialization and all that. So we don't use fossil fuel, so we save energy. Breastfeeding women who are supported by their employers are more, more productive and loyal. So employment, welfare. Another one is industrialization and urbanization. The time and space challenge become more prominent. So breastfeeding mothers who work outside their home and manage their challenges if supported by employers and communities will make a big difference. That is a community health. Breastfeeding practices offer across the globe uh, differ across the globe I'm sorry so breastfeeding need to be protected promoted and supported among all but in particular among poor and vulnerable groups this will help to reduce inequality because breastfeeding in the rich and breastfeeding in the poor should be same the workflow is same is just need more support for poor and more understanding in rich in the bustle of big cities breastfeeding of mother and their babies need to feel safe and in the welcome in public space. So as I said earlier, restaurants, breastfeeding, welcome signs, posters, all of that. So uh, that will support, uh, that support is um, disproportionate at the moment. Uh, so if that is there, that also will be there when it's a disaster and calamity. Breastfeeding provides healthy and viable and non polluting non-resource in so, uh, intensive, sustainable and natural source of nutrition and sustenance. So it's um, uh, nutrition and sustenance as well. So actually raising awareness together we can achieve as individual health professionals and organization. We can do all more even though we know. So here are some ways we can raise awareness and support women to breastfeed their infants. Offer women support in initializing breastfeeding and encouragement to continue. Ask women what practical support would be helpful. Can family and friends support or assist with some housework support errands or provide a listening ear, even listening to them? Be familiar with the names of support organizations in your community and district. Check this list with the international organizations so that you can provide the best possible information. As organization, advocate for policies to promote breastfeeding, including appropriate maternity leave and engagement of a breastfeeding among your employees. For health services, ensure baby friendly hospital initiative and international core of marketing of breast milk substitute uh, that are adhered to. There are some uh, links uh, you can go through which are useful. Um, number one is going home so this is available online so there are certain things we actually cannot give information even though we are talking about breastfeeding initiating supporting and establishing but still there will be something left for going home so mothers can actually have a look at it uh, from neonatal unit and from this is could you is actually is a parent organization parents support each other now, another um, tool for exclusive breastfeeding practice in South Africa called Cure Up. So it, it has got a good information on how we can improve in the hospital and community by uh, Vitalis, uh, which is published recently. So these, this can probably help. Thank you. Thank you, madam for enlightening us on raising awareness regarding the breastfeeding and will surely be helpful to all us. Now I hand over to my colleague Miss Pooja Bosle 
for further session thank you everyone thank you sheetal myself pooja gosle from final year ms nursing student now i would like to introduce our next speaker respected dr parul datta she is retired as principal nursing officer from west bengal government nursing services about 42 years experience in nursing mainly in neonatal and child health master trainer of facility based newborn care nrp kmc and infection control program she is vice president of indian association of neonatal nurses independent nursing professional she is author of the textbook pediatric nursing and various nursing articles in local and national journals she is life member of tnai somi nrsi nnfi and ian she is recipient of national florence nightingale award from honorable president of india in 2008 today she will illuminate us about challenges and support required for breastfeeding at different level thank you i would like to request ma'am for further session please listen my presentation on the topic challenges and support required for breastfeeding at different levels in this world breastfeeding week 2022 welcome for my presentation on breastfeeding practices outline of my presentation include introduction then about world breastfeeding week theme 2022 then constraint and challenges for successful breastfeeding then support for optimal breastfeeding practices at different levels of society and with some key messages we all know that breastfeeding is best feeding for the infant and it is hope for the bright future with good nutrition and optimum growth and development This year in 2022 World Breastfeeding Breastfeeding Week theme is step up for breastfeeding educate and support it indicates that we have to promote the breastfeeding practices from the situation where at present we are now and so we have to educate and support mother and family members we have to also educate and make aware about the breastfeeding constraint and barriers to the healthcare providers and health manpower so then only we will be able able to overcome these challenges and we will be able to educate all around the peoples around us so in this year in 2022 in world breastfeeding week we will focus on strengthening the capacity of actors that have to protect promote and support breastfeeding across different levels of the society these actors make up the warm chain of support for breastfeeding in different area in rural area urban area for the poor socio economic uh, economic group of people from rich to the rich affluent family and also in the facility level and also in the community level in all levels we have to provide support we know we all know that world breastfeeding week is celebrated annually every year by world alliance of breastfeeding action on the first week of august and represent a global celebration of breastfeeding effort including promotion of breast milk feeding with mother's own milk support education research progressive trends and normalizing breastfeeding as the gold standard of infant nutrition this world breastfeeding week celebration is organized by world alliance for, for breastfeeding action throughout the world in india national neonatology forum of india in this uh, year in 2022 give emphasis also for step up for breastfeeding and to educate and support the mothers and family members and also the healthcare providers in this week they have given emphasis 
with the slogan that breastfeeding is the elixir of life. Matri Dugdho Omrito Shaman. They also give emphasis as Stan Pan Jivandan Ka Shaman Hota Hai. Human milk is for human brain. For optimal neurodevelopment outcome, we have to feed the baby with mother's own milk. National Neonatology Forum of India also give emphasis in this breastfeeding week about the cholesterol feeding and with the slogan that cholesterol each drop matters. We all know cholesterol is the first immunization to the neonate and it protects the neonate from various infections. Also cholesterol feeding prevents hyperbilirubinemia thus it also prevents the neonatal jaundice. So that is why cholesterol feeding is very important by early initiation of breastfeeding within one hour of birth to the newborn who are not sick or not very small. So let me highlight now about the Indian scenario of breastfeeding practices. As reported by Breastfeeding Promotion Network of India on 31st July 2019 before the breastfeeding week that in India breastfeeding is inadequate. As reported by Breastfeeding Promotion Network of India that it is in inadequate because only 55 percent of the babies are exclusively breastfed in 0 to 6 months of age and only 41 percent of neonates are able to begin breastfeeding with an hour of birth. So, it indicates the breastfeeding is inadequate for Indian newborns. So, it is our target to reach the exclusive breastfeeding to 65.7% by 2025. So, we have to overcome the constraint and barriers and we have to take this challenge to reach our target. British Medical Journal also reported on 25th August 2020 during the COVID pandemic situation that breastfeeding in India is disturbed, disrupted as mothers and babies are separated during COVID-19 pandemic situation. They also reported this, that India's effort to promote breastfeeding are threatened by COVID-19 pandemic as misguided by fears of corona infection between mother and newborns. So, anxiety of the mothers, dewindling of support by the healthcare providers, false belief and wrong information related to breastfeeding during COVID-19 situation are major factors for reduction of the age-old practices of feeding the baby with mother's own breast milk. So, let me now highlight about the constraint to exclusive breastfeeding. In a survey conducted uh, for with the um, respondents with the mothers and family members, it showed the major constraint to exclusive breastfeeding are the perception that babies continue to be hungry after breastfeeding. It is found in 29 percent of uh, among the respondents. That means after breastfeeding, the baby will feel hungry and, and breastfeeding is inadequate. It is their perception. Though the perception, this is the false perception, so it is the most important constraint and we have to overcome this constraint by the education and support. Other constraint are maternal health problems that, that, that is found in 26 percent of respondent as the mothers are having malnutrition, anemia and comorbidities, so they are not able to continue the exclusive breastfeeding. And also another constraint is fear of the babies becoming addicted to breast milk and mother can be the mother will be the pacifier to the baby. So that is why exclusive breastfeeding up to 6 months is not practiced. And for that reason also mother-in-law they created pressure because when mother is uh, mother is giving breastfeeding to the baby, mother will spend her time for the baby and there will be less time for the family or household work. So that is why the mother-in-law sometimes give pressure against the exclusive breastfeeding. 
other constant they have found in the survey that pain in the breast of the mother due to sore nipple, crack nipple, engorged breast and mastitis. This happens due to faulty techniques, poor or inappropriate positioning and attachment during breastfeeding. So, with this constant only exclusive breastfeeding is not possible for our Indian neonates and infants. So, other than this constant, what we know the common barriers of optimal breastfeeding practices, I like to discuss about that points also. So, most important uh, barrier is lack of knowledge about breastfeeding among mothers and family members, especially regarding the benefits, advantage and techniques. So, they are practicing the faulty breastfeeding techniques like prelactic feeding with honey, sugar or other things or incorrect positioning during breastfeeding or incorrect attachment during breastfeeding leads to lactational failure and baby is not satisfied or baby is not getting optimum breastfeeding. Other barriers are lack or inadequate support from the family members due to present day situation with the nuclear family. Another barrier is considered as lack of direct support during breastfeeding by the healthcare providers. Healthcare pro due to scarcity and due to the workload, healthcare providers are not able to demonstrate the breastfeeding technique to the mother. And that's why the mother, sometimes mother and family members, they are not able to feed the breastfeeding effectively and optimal breastfeeding practices is not followed. There is misconception that formula feeding is equivalent to mother's milk. And that's why especially for the rich and affluent family and economically sufficient family, they are purchasing the formula milk and they are feeding the baby with the formula milk. Though there is some act, but in spite of that, the formula feeding is continued. There is false belief, myths and misconceptions about the breastfeeding practices. There are so many myths and misconceptions. I have highlighted about three of that. Most important one is the no milk secretion in first few days of delivery. And that's why the as the cholesterol is very less in amount so that's why they thought this is this is not milk oh, so cholesterol feeding is not practiced and another misconception is there is less amount of milk secretion after three or four months of the uh, delivery or four months of the age of the infant so it is not sufficient for the infant so that's why after three to four months they have initiated in usually the initiation of complementary feeding is done after three to four months of the age of the baby another misconception is night feeding is not required because at night mother and baby will sleep and they will take rest but we know that with night feeding only the prolactin reflex is enhanced and that will promote the breast milk secretion so, like this and misconception sometimes become the barrier for successful breastfeeding practices. Other barriers include embarrassment of the mother about breastfeeding in public places due to lack of privacy and problems related to mother's breast condition such as inverted nipple or retracted nipple or flat nipple, sore nipple, breast engorgement, breast abscess, not enough milk supply. So, that also acts as a barrier for optimal breastfeeding practice. And sometimes baby's condition also um, plays as a barrier, especially when the baby is unable to take direct breastfeeding due to poor or absence of sucking reflex in case of sick, preterm or very low birth weight infant or when the baby is refused to take breastfeeding due to any discomfort or illness. So, that time the optimal breastfeeding practices will not be successful. And if mother is sick or malnourished or absence, absent due to death or any other situation or unwilling to feed the baby due to some misconception or myths, then there will be that will be a barrier that will be barrier for optimal breastfeeding also. And another barrier is the for the working mother when they are returning to their job with insufficient maternity leave 
then they have they are the exclusive breastfeeding practices is disrupted and baby is not getting if the mother is not getting leave for six months then the baby will not get the exclusive breastfeeding and most important con constraint or barrier is is the availability of infant milk substitute as animal milk or formula milk oh, that's why as it is available so family members will purchase and they will not think about they will they are not aware about the um, disadvantages of animal milk and formula milk so they will feed the baby with this infant milk substitute and they will deprive the baby from the optimal growth and development with exclusive breastfeeding so to overcome all these constraint and barrier we have to support for breastfeeding direct breastfeeding or breast milk feeding with express breast milk so what is our responsibility so most important responsibility is to do antenatal counseling regarding benefits and techniques of breastfeeding or breast milk feeding with mother's own milk by express breast milk whenever needed when the baby is small and sick or admitted in neonatal care units we have to promote the early initiation of breastfeeding within one hour of birth of the baby along with skin to skin contact care irrespective of mode of delivery when mother and baby are not sick. We have to provide compulsory cholesterol feeding to the neonate. We know the benefits of cholesterol. We should not allow any prelactal feeding. We have to practice zero separation between the mother and baby. We know if there is separation there will be less milk secretion. So, zero separation will be there unless if they are sick, mother and baby are sick, then we, we will separate. Otherwise, they will be in bedding in and rooming in in the postnatal period. We will allow breastfeeding and we will teach the mother to give breastfeeding during day and night time for at least 8 to 10 times per day. No omission of night feed should be practiced. We have to ensure the adequacy of breastfeeding. And we have to check the urine output it should be six to eight times per day there will be adequate weight gain after gaining birth weight and there will be sleep for two to three hours in which to feed that will indicate the baby is getting adequate breast milk from the mother and that will help for the that will we have to teach that things and that will help for optimum growth and development and good nutrition of the infant also we have to support with avoiding the feeding bottles or pacifier to the breastfeeding infant uh, if the feeding bottle and pacifier are used then the, there will be nipple confusion by the baby baby will not take the mother's breast milk uh, we have to ensure both for milk and hind milk feeding for that we have to teach the mother to allow the baby to feed at one breast till the baby stops suckling or and releases the breast mother should offer other breast if the baby demands for more so these things we have to teach the mother because they are not about they are not aware about this scientific concept we have to motivate for exclusive breastfeeding up to six months of life of the infant we should not allow anything other than the breast milk we should not allow water honey or sweet drink to feed the baby except prescribed medications we have to ensure introduction of complementary feeding after six months of age of the infant and continuation of breastfeeding up to two years of age of the child especially at night that is considered as thousand days care concept of the children for optimal growth and development and IQ development of the child. We have to give special emphasis to promote breast milk feeding with mother's own milk for preterm and low birth weight and sick neonate, sick infant using the expressed breast milk. So we have to teach the mother manual expression of breast milk and that's the specialized techniques we have to teach. Otherwise mother will feel pain and they will not be able to do the expression. So technique of expression of breast breast milk we have to teach to the mother and we also we have to provide lactational diet and adequate fluid intake rest and sleep to the mother during lactating period and we have to ensure continued support for breastfeeding problem if any problem arise to the mother and if family members are not able to solve that problem 
So, we have to support to overcome these breastfeeding challenges, this constraint and this barrier at different levels. In the, it happens, this breastfeeding problem happens in rural area, in urban area, in a rich family, also in the poor family. It can happen in the facility level, it can happen also. So, we have to support both in the facility level, in the community level. That means for the facility level care of the newborns and home based care of the newborns. So, it is our responsibility at the facility level to follow the baby friendly hospital initiative guidelines along with 10 steps to successful breastfeeding recommended by WHO and UNICEF. We have to practice antenatal breastfeeding counseling intensively using IC materials for the behavior change communication. We have to promote skin to skin contact care at birth, early initiation of breastfeeding, kangaroo mother care for low birth weight infant, zero separation between mother and baby and exclusive breastfeeding up to 6 months of age. No prelactal feeding, we have to avoid prelactal feeding and no artificial feeding. We have to manage the breastfeeding, uh, breast problem of the mother and mother's illness appropriately and promptly. And we have to identify that problems without prompt management, there will be lactational failure. We have to promote expression of breast milk for feeding of small and sick neonates. In the facility level, we, if we manage this problem, then it will be continued and that if the breast feeding is established in facility, that will be continued at home in the, and with the support of the community level. So, we have to involve the community health worker, ASHA, ANM and CHO at community. We have to establish breastfeeding support group in local area and we have to use mass media support to promote breastfeeding practices in the TV in the and in the other modes also. So, key messages of my presentation include, we all know that breastfeeding is beneficial for mother, baby, family and society. So, so we have to promote the breastfeeding practice to improve the chil children's health. Breastfeeding plays a crucial role for good health, growth and development and intact survival of the children without any long term morbidity and complications. Nursing personnel have a powerful influence on women's decision to breastfeed her baby and on success of her breastfeeding experience to overcome the challenges and constraint and barriers related to breastfeeding. We have to educate the mother, it is our responsibility to educate the mother and the family members to improve the breastfeeding practices. For that we have to update our knowledge also. So, women need to be informed accurately with the uh, scientific information and they require support at home, in health facilities, in workplaces and in everywhere of their presence where the mother and baby are there. Thank you for patients listening. Thank you everyone. Thank you madam for your informative session. As madam said, breastfeeding is best feeding and hope for a bright future with good nutrition and optimum growth and development of child. Breastfeeding is elixir of life. Nursing personnel have a powerful influence on woman's decision to breastfeed her baby and on a success of her breastfeeding experience to overcome the challenges. It is our responsibility to educate the mother and family member to improve the breastfeeding practices. Now I hand over to Siddhikshana for further session. Thank you Pooja. I miss Siddhikshana Boinwad, student of final year MSc Nursing. I would like to introduce our next speaker. I heartily welcome Mrs. Pranalini Padeshi. She has 23 years of professional experience. She is currently working at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, Kingland, NHS Foundation Trust at UK as a diabetes specialty nurse. Has also worked at chemotherapy nurse before coming to UK have worked in various school and college of nursing in various capacity. She is an Alumina or Bachelor and Master from Bharti Vidyapeet College of Nursing, Pune. 
she completed her master degree in pediatric nursing looking forward toward her additional achievement cognitive behavior therapy in palliative care from macmillan cancer support kingland uk neonatal resuscitation program providing course and training for trainer for bharti vidyapeet college of nursing pune india introductory orientation course in palliative care science from shipla palliative care and training center pune she has life membership of professional bodies at the uk in trained diabetes united kingdom oncology nursing society madam will help us understand on warm chain campaign over to you ma'am for the session good morning and greetings to you from the queen elizabeth hospital kings lynn i would like to thank madam kurshid jamadar and the organizers of this webinar for giving me an opportunity to speak on the topic warm chain campaign i would specially like to thank supriya for being so patient with me so the warm chain campaign it places the mother baby diet at the core it strives to link different actors across the health community and workplace sectors to provide a continuum of care during the first 1000 days so what is a warm chain a warm chain is a set of 10 interlinked procedures carried out at birth and during the following hours and de- days which will minimize the likelihood of hypothermia in all newborn why is it necessary because the newborn cannot regulate its temperature as well as we adults can it therefore cools down or heats up much faster moreover newborn babies have less subcutaneous fat which means they cannot store heat or they can store very less heat progressive reduction in body temperature leads to adverse clinical effects ranging from mild metabolic stress to death for us to appreciate the warm chain we first need to comprehend how heat loss occurs in a newborn it could be through four methods the first one convection that is the loss of heat from the baby's warm body surface to cooler air currents passing over the body second radiation that is the transfer of the baby's body heat to cooler surfaces and objects not in direct contact with the baby third evaporation the loss of baby's body heat as the amniotic fluid on the baby's skin turns to vapor it also includes heat loss from expired air from the baby's respiratory tract evaporation accounts for approximately 25% of heat loss immediately after birth and the fourth is conduction the loss of baby's body heat through direct contact with cooler objects such as blanket scale etc so let's see the warm chain as mentioned earlier it has got 10 components the warm delivery room immediate drying skin to skin contact breast feeding bathing and weighing postponed appro- appropriate clothing and bedding mother and baby together or rooming in warm transportation warm resuscitation and training and awareness so let's see into each component one by one the first one is a warm delivery room the room should be clean and warm and free from drafts from open windows and doors or from fans in some circumstances it might be easier to warm a small area of the room rather than the whole room the supplies needed to keep the ba- newborn baby warm should be prepared ahead of time in cold cool weather a, a source of heat should be available to pre-warm the clothes and towels second immediate and thorough drying after birth the baby should be immediately dried 
including its head while the cord is still attached the baby should be dried on a warm surface such as the mother's chest or abdomen or a pre-warmed cloth on the bed the baby should be covered with a second dry towel a cap put on its head if the room temperature is less than optimal towels and caps should be pre-warmed next is skin to skin contact this is an effective method of preventing heat loss in newborns whether they are full term or preterm babies the mother's chest or abdomen is the ideal surface to receive the newborn as it is clean and at just the right temperature if skin to skin contact is not acceptable the baby could be wrapped after having been dried and placed on in the mother's arms the baby can be kept in skin to in skin to skin contact with the mother while she is being attended to example placenta delivery or suturing of the tears next is early breastfeeding an early and adequate supply of breast milk is essential to provide the newborn with calories so that it can generate body heat the the warm breast milk keeps the baby warm from inside and it also provides skin to skin contact delayed bathing and weighing bathing the newborn soon after birth causes a drop in the baby's body temperature and is not necessary blood meconium and some of the vernix will have been wiped off during drying the baby the remaining vernix does not need to be removed as it is harmless and it may reduce heat loss and is reabsorbed through the skin during the first days of life if cultural tradition demands bathing then this should be carried out after 6 hours from birth and preferably on the second or third day of life as long as the baby is healthy and its temperature is normal next is clothing the baby should be clothed appropriately in accordance with the temperature of its environment it should not be too tight and should allow air spaces between the layers as the trapped air is a very efficient insulator rooming in when a mother and baby are together it is easier to keep the baby warm and to breastfeed on demand next is warm transportation it is important to keep the baby warm during transportation this is a step that if overlooked can result in a drop of the newborn's body temperature even if the thermal protection me- measures were adequate at the time of birth the simplest and safest way to transport newborns is in skin to skin contact with the mother next is warm resuscitation It is very important that the baby is kept warm during this procedure since newborns with asphyxia cannot produce heat effectively and are at an increased risk of going hypothermic. To keep the baby warm during resuscitation the following measures can be taken that is wrapping the baby in a warm blanket and laying it on a dry warm surface such as a warm towel or blanket only the face and upper part of the chest should be exposed putting the baby under an additional source of heat such as an radiant heater if available post resuscitation the newborn's temperature should be taken and if necessary the baby should be rewarmed by placing it skin to skin with the mother and helping her initiate breastfeeding as soon as possible last and not the least training and awareness all healthcare providers involved in the process of birth and subsequent care of the newborn need to be adequately trained to the principles and procedures of the warm chain families and communities need to be made aware of the importance of keeping newborns warm and be given information on how to do so
As we celebrate the International Breastfeeding Week, I think my presentation would be incomplete if I don't highlight on diabetes and breastfeeding. Breastfeeding lowers the mother's blood glucose levels. Hence, if the mother is on insulin, she needs to drop the insulin dose by 25%. Diabetic mothers are more likely to be hypoglycemic during breastfeeding. Hence, reminding them to keep some hypoglycemia treatment in form of fast-acting carbohydrates at hand is very essential. Fast-acting carbohydrates can be in the form of uh, half a cup of any fruit juice, half a can of regular fizzy drink, or two tablespoons of raisins, or a glass of milk, or five to six pieces of hard candy. If you have any questions about my presentation, I would be more than happy to answer them. You can get in touch with me through the organizers. Thank you for listening and all the best to you all as you play your part in the warm chain. Thank you. Thank you so much, madam, for the detailed session on warm chain campaign which will increase the knowledge of participant the warm chain campaign place the mother and baby diet at the core of care prevent hypothermia maintain warm chain early detection by human touch and promote remedial measure are the key for reducing this preventable morbidity now i would hand over to miss salika vadia for the further program. Over to you, Selika. Thank you, Sidikshna. Our next speaker for today's webinar is Dr. Priyanka Shinde. She is an international board certified lactation consultant currently working at Lalwani Mother and Child Care Hospital, Pune. She is an experienced lactation consultant managing lactation services in maternity settings while serving as a consultant for medical professionals and patients. She is dedicated to promoting awareness about the importance of breastfeeding and committed to providing patients with necessary consultation to reach their breastfeeding goals. She specializes in evaluation, planning and implementation of progressive improvement in breastfeeding for patients with issues. From her past experiences, she also has clinical experience in general medicine and managing insurance claims for organization of reputes. Ma'am will enlighten us regarding skill breastfeeding counseling. Now, without further ado, we will turn the time over to today's presenter, Dr. Priyanka Shinde. Over to you, ma'am. Good morning. I'm Dr. Priyanka. I'm an IBCLC, a lactation consultant. It means I'm a skilled person in breastfeeding. So today's topic for discussion will be skilled breastfeeding counseling. So I will be uh, dealing in details about the counseling part in breastfeeding. So we are moving to the next slide. So I'll be giving a brief points regarding importance of breastfeeding and breast milk. I will be dealing these points in a brief. So let's speak about uh, importance of breastfeeding for a child. So here, the point, uh, like it's uh, breast milk is easy for digestion, where the initial feed, what we say as a cholesterol, is very easy to digest, and it helps baby uh, to improve uh, digestion. Nextly, we will move to like uh, rich in nutrition values. It has 200 contents in it, uh, so it is very rich. Mother's milk is very rich in nutrition values. Then uh, factors like DHA helps in development as, a, as well as intellectual development in the child. The next is helps in cognitive development. Like um, child uh, motor skills, sensory skills, all these skills are also uh, a part of cognitive development. And next uh, is immunity. In multiple diseases, uh, breast milk helps to give immunity. 
for example the recent what we suffered is covid so the new studies and studies in uh, showed that breast milk has antibodies uh, regarding uh, which provides the immunity to a child in breast milk then nextly uh, as we see ki breast milk should be given for a year or two years i as per who but here why do we really go for two years why not first one year where there is an importance of uh, breast milk for just one year the nutrition value here the part for extended breastfeeding is the emotional support for the child the new research indicates that there are good bacteria uh, in intestine which are maintained due to breast milk then moving to the next part even breastfeeding helps mother how it helps mother in uh, protecting against ovarian cancer as well as breast cancer mother is more attached to the baby in how uh, what ways i will i am ex- uh, saying this the attachment with the baby because the cues hunger cues where the mother understands the baby well when she is breastfeeding otherwise when it comes to formula feed it's a scheduled feeding like 2 hourly or 2 and 1/2 hourly so here breast milk is not the uh, breast feeding is not the scheduled feeding so here the mother understands and attaches to the baby well and child spacing it's a natural uh, way for child spacing as the hormonal levels are for uh, good for breastfeeding now we are moving to the next slide so i will go with breastfeeding counseling it means what is exactly the breastfeeding counseling is it is the conversation between whom between two people which two people one will be the skilled person who is skilled or has a knowledge regarding the breastfeeding and other person will be a mother or a woman who has issues regarding breastfeeding and what it includes it includes listening and responding to the woman by the skilled person respecting her privacy as well as her feelings so breastfeeding counseling is the way where a skilled person helps you out regarding solving the issues whatever the mother is facing we will move to the next slide what does the breastfeeding counseling includes exactly what does it includes just dealing no the breastfeeding counseling includes lot of things which is the best part during the breastfeeding which helps the mother to gain confidence as well as uh, continue with an exclusive breastfeeding for first six months so what it includes education educating a mother regarding the breastfeeding when during pregnancy and after delivery these two uh, important stages where the mother should be educated so she can take her informed decision regarding breastfeeding the next part is uh, next point will be the reassurance reassurance regarding what reassurance means helping a mother to gain the confidence and helping her to sort the issues and giving her the confidence that she can breast milk uh, breast sorry breastfeed and uh, deal all the issues uh, regarding it then skilled practical help how it includes what it includes a skilled practical help a person uh, who has a knowledge regarding it can help a mother latching a baby or even uh, helping her the position and even telling her how she can hold her baby i will take an example over here explaining this even everything is normal baby uh, is born uh, 38 weeks or plus a full term baby well uh, with a proper weight there are no issues regarding latching and all 
but a simple thing after third day there is an breast engorgement and areola edema but what happens after that baby cannot latch first two days when the breast are soft baby can latch but after that on third day after engorgement baby cannot latch so here you need a skill practical help where you can give a reverse pressure massage technique making that that helps a mother to help making the areola soft and baby can latch so these simple things matter uh so it includes a skill so here how a breastfeeding counseling or a counselor can help then problem solving there are small small things like uh, areola edema and bigger things like uh, your baby is in an icu a preterm baby a preemie can uh, latch so these are the bigger parts where you have to help a mother or counseling or uh, proper guidance can help a mother giving a uh, breast milk as well as breastfeeding then anticipatory guidance here it includes an information regarding the breastfeeding and a way or a technique regarding the breastfeeding where a mother can uh, get a help from a skilled counselor so she can take an informed decision and she get a proper help so uh, she, uh, she can sort out the way her routine will be along with the breastfeeding accessibility and availability a counselor should be available and should be accessible to a mother whenever she requires or whenever she has some issues and there should be consistency in counseling for example first few days she is settled but there may be issues going ahead so there should be consistency uh, regarding the breastfeeding counseling so mother can go with an exclusive breastfeeding and going ahead a uh, solid combination of solid and breastfeeding and even a working mother then go ahead with the breastfeeding moving to the next slide what are the important stages of breastfeeding counseling what are those where we need to counsel a patient or a counsel a mother first and foremost part is antenatal antenatal means when a lady is expecting or a woman is expecting she should have some knowledge about breastfeeding so what knowledge she should have how she can latch a baby how she can take care of a baby when everything is normal full term normal baby but if sometimes there are issues like babies are premature or babies can't latch so these things are also to be told or guided to the mother where she can get a help regarding this then after birth after birth means first two to three days which are critical where a mother needs a counseling regarding breastfeeding here what will be sorted like latching problems engorgement problems and whether a baby is getting enough milk or no then moving to the next point here after 28 days what it includes the 20 after 28 days a mother should get a confidence that i am feeding my baby properly she is getting a uh, baby is getting enough milk so how it can be confirmed it can be confirmed with the weight gain and the urine output of the baby so here on 28 day just for the confirmation whether the breastfeeding is going on a well track here the counseling is the best part then moving to the 3 months so why on the third month where everything is normal baby is gaining weight every uh, urine output is normal then why the counseling is needed on the third month because here the baby sometimes demand more why baby demands more because there is a growth spurt at the third month so how baby will tell a mother i am hungry my requirement is more 
so give me more so baby will go and ask sorry baby will demand more so sometimes mother get confused ki whether i am producing breast milk enough so here the counseling will help telling her the growth sprout is a natural phenomena and she can give her baby breast milk exclusively moving to the next part that is at the 6 months counseling at the 6 months why it is required at the 6 months because here the baby will be shifting on a solid diet as well as baby's most important requirement is again the breastfeeding so balancing out breastfeeding and solid those things should be guided through counseling then till 2 years so any time between this antenatal after birth 28 days 3 months to 6 months all till 2 years why because during teething the mother may uh, baby may injure mother and this may lead the mother to take a decision not to continue with the breastfeeding but a proper counseling with the mother can help a baby as well as mother to continue breastfeeding so counseling till 2 years is okay but why it is said 2 years because i have taken here 2 years because who generally says till 2 years but i prefer or we say that breastfeeding is a decision between a child and mother till the child is comfortable and mother is comfortable breastfeeding should be continued moving to the next slide so mode of counseling what are the mode of counseling how we can counsel a mother in person in person means one to one or face to face individual with a person or with a mother then in a group counseling where there are group of mothers where we are taking a uh, lectures or giving an information regarding uh, breastfeeding then remotely where here remotely we are using uh, medias like video calling email messages etc so this can be a remotely uh, mode of counseling but still i prefer when it comes for breastfeeding and uh, face to face help is it always work then community a community mode of counseling means a peer can help or a experienced mother can help a new mother moving to the next slide so there was no any intervention done in a control group and the results after 4 week were like 83.9 were exclusively breastfeeding mothers in intervention group where the mini, with the minimum issues related to breastfeeding and where in control group there was 71.9% of the mother feeding with few issues regarding the breastfeeding so it's always uh, proven that counseling gives a real help to the mother to continue with the breastfeeding and to help with an exclusive breastfeeding moving to the next slide here i have taken the global rates breastfeeding global rates so which is the country where there are more breastfeeding or uh, more breastfeeding done it is croatia croatia sorry which is 98% rwanda it is 87% then the chile it is 84% burundi it's 82% then sri lanka it's 82% and then last or uh, we i have just added it's india it is 55% in india though it is so a breastfeeding friendly country but the rate is so low because the proper guidance is not yet provided to the mothers the prior primary mothers they need a proper guidance and you need a skilled counseling so to increase this you need a uh, increase breastfeeding rate in india you need 
a proper help which will for sure help to uh, increase the rate of breastfeeding moving to the next slide here i have been speaking about the mother counseling with the mother but a breastfeeding is a support uh, depends or depends upon the support because breastfeeding can only be done by the mother and it's a hectic thing so including father for it like feeding and then uh, taking care of a baby by a father and feeding by a mother will always help a mother to take a rest and continue happily with an exclusive breastfeeding so always the counseling is not just related to the mother but it's related to a family or a support system thank you thank you ma'am that is so informative i am sure our participants learn a lot from that as ma'am said breastfeeding is a pillar of child health survival and development and it has positive health effects for women strengthening health provider skills in breastfeeding counseling and incorporating breastfeeding counseling into all perinatal and critical child health contexts can increase rates of recommended breastfeeding practices and improve social and economic outcomes thank you so much ma'am for all the information now we will conclude the program by conducting the vot of thanks for that i will hand over to my colleague ms monal kurne it gives me immense pleasure to deliver the vot of thanks for this event i would like to thank the management of bharti vidyapeet university and bharti vidyapeet deemed to be university pune honorable chancellor dr shivaji rao ji kadam pro vice chancellor and secretary honorable dr vishwajit ji kadam honorable vice chancellor dr manik rao ji sarunki registrar jay kumar sir for encouraging us to strive for best quality and innovative practice heartfelt gratitude to our respected principal ma'am dr khushid zamadar for motivating us to organize this international webinar we extend our gratitude to all the faculty and support staff for their extended support we would also thank mr mukesh joping for technical support we would also like to thank the faculty of child health nursing and obstetric and gynecological nursing department along with the post graduate students for making this event happen we express our sincere thanks to all the participant for attending this event it has been a great pleasure to have all with us before i conclude kindly note the feedback link will be posted in a comment box the link will be active for half an hour thank you for joining us have a wonderful day ahead once again thank all present here thank you